Hello, everyone. Welcome to Braille 102, an introduction to Braille contractions. This is the next step in Braille after learning the alphabet and numbers. My name is Julie Somalt. I'm the Braille specialist at the Wisconsin Center for the Blind and Visually Impaired. And I'm really happy you're here. Let's go on to the next slide. I want to clarify the goals for this session. Um, a few, just a few of them, actually. Uh, we, we're going to learn the concept of contractions in Braille, what contractions are and what they do. We're going to learn about types of contractions because contractions are according to similarities. And a little bit about how contractions work. We are not going to memorize all contractions today, so don't worry about memorizing everything. Don't beat yourself up. These contractions take some time in the real world to learn. Your son or daughter might, or grandchild, might take months, a couple of years to learn all these contractions. And your little preschooler right now does not need to know big fancy words. So just concentrate on the ones that show up in everyday life for your child. You are not going to be able to recite all the categories of contractions. So don't worry about what they're called. There are categories so that if your child comes home from school, say, and says, I'm learning the dot five contractions. You have some idea of what he or she is talking about. It's not about learning everything and memorizing everything today. Nor are you going to learn all the rules for using contractions. There are lots and lots of rules. Contract um, transcribers take a long time. We attend workshops, workshops and all sorts of things to keep these contractions fresh in our minds. It's not something that you need to learn about, um, concern yourselves with, unless you want to. You can go on. But today we're just going to barely touch the surface of some of those rules. A reminder, if you have um, gotten about the Braille cell, it's gonna be very important when we talk about contractions today to remember that the Braille cell is made up of six dots, one, two, three down the left side, four, five, six down the right side. We're going to concentrate on the right side, especially four, five, and six. So do try to remember that. Another reminder, the Braille alphabet. Here it is just for your reference. We're not going to go through it, but if you need to look back at that during the practice exercises, you can have this page at hand. And I have a lot of pra practice sessions. What do contractions do? Well, we're not talking about English grammar contractions. I can't, um, have, haven't, things like that. We're not talking about that. These are unique to Braille because Braille is really big, you may have noticed. So to save some space, which was very, very important, especially back in the time of Louis Braille, who invented this back in the mid 1800s. We, so contractions save space which also saves time. Braille is a gross motor movement with your whole hand and your arm instead of your eyes. So saving time is a really good deal. Contractions, as I said, are not English grammar contractions, but in Braille, they stand for common letter combinations and words. Look at that later. Contractions might use one or more cells. They might use two cells or even three cells sometimes. As I said before, the contractions are grouped according to similarities. There are about 180 contractions. So don't try to memorize everything today. Just focus on the ones that are showing up in your everyday life now. You can always learn more later. Here is our first group of contractions. They're called alphabetic word signs because they use the letters of the alphabet standing all by themselves and they stand for entire words. 
almost every letter in the alphabet has a contraction, an alphabetic word sign that goes with it. The exceptions being A, I, and O, because those are already words in the English language. So they start with B, not A, because B can, be, can stand for but, and it's all by itself, and it's not confused with any other word in the English language. C, all by itself, stands for can. You see the word can right there. When the C, with other braille symbols, especially letters, then it's just C again. But when it's all by itself, like it is there on the screen, the spaces on either side, then it can stand for the word can. And then you can read the rest of these if you like. I'll go through them quickly. D for do, E for every, F for M, G for go, H for have, J for just, K for knowledge, L for like, M for more, N for not, P for people, Q for quite, R for rather, S for so, T for that, U for us, V for very, W for will, X for it. That's the one, one of the only, two only ones that don't really correspond to the letter. X for it, Y for you, and then Z is the other one that doesn't quite correspond, well, doesn't correspond at all to the letter Z. It stands for the word as. These contractions, you probably do want to memorize as much as you can. Again, your three-year-old is not likely to come across the word knowledge or even maybe people or rather quite. So don't worry about those unless you want to. What you might want to focus on are words that come up in a three-year-old's vocabulary. Go, have, like, more, not. Um, I'm looking around. It, you, that, maybe just those. You can choose which ones you want to learn right now. Let's go to the next slide. The next group of strong contract is called strong contractions. And these can stand for whole, like we just looked at the previous screen, or even parts of words. So the, these um, braille contractions, these strong contractions are very important because they show up everywhere. You probably do want to memorize these very calm words, even for a young child. And again, they can stand for the words like and, or it can be A and D. So let's look at how they can be used. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'll do that in a moment. I want to remind you, you may have worked on a Braille writer, especially in Braille 101. This is a mechanical machine. It works kind of like a typewriter. I say it's a cross between a typewriter and a piano. Sometimes you have to press more than one key at a time to make the braille cell. And then you let go and it shifts over to the next cell space or cell, just like an old typewriter. And it keeps going. So, and you put, it, this does it on a piece of paper. And if, so you instantly have physical dots to feel. It also, a braille writer has a line down key to go down to the next line, a space key and a backspace key. Notice that the number keys for the dots don't go from left to right, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, the dots on the left side of the cell start in the kind of the keys and then goes out. So one, two, three, then the space bar in the middle, and then it does go in numerical order, four, five, six for the right side of the cell. If you want to make a Braille character that has dots on both sides of the cell. I'll go back one screen to show you. Oh, two, yes, this is good. Look at, for instance, the top one, and or A and D. There are dots raised on the left side of the cell and the right side of the cell. And to do this on the braille writer, we would push down all at the same time, keys one, two, three on the left, and four and only six on the right. And that would make our whole braille character. Then the braille writer would shift over to the next cell, which is blank at the moment. And then you would make cell. So that's how a braille writer works. Today though, I wasn't able to ship out, um, ship out braille writers to everyone. So we're going to use the computer. And that's what I use every day when I'm working 
as a, as a transcriber, as a trainer, I use the computer and you can use your regular QWERTY keyboard for this. Once you have a special software that converts your keyboard into kind of a braille writer. So this, you're going to use your keyboard now and the keys work just like they did for the braille writer. One, two, three goes from the inside out, not left to right. So one, two, three will be your home row keys of S, D, F. The dots on the right side of the cell going down four, five, six will be your home row keys of J, K, L. None of the other keys will work. So just S, D, F and J, K, L. You will also be able to use the backspace on your keyboard, enter on your keyboard, the space bar, and I think you can even use delete on your keyboard. This is a practice slide. So you'll need to look at this at your paper handout as you work on the computer with your Perky Duck, unless you have two video screens going at the same time right now. This is practice for the alphabetic word signs that we just looked at and the strong contractions. There are six sentences and where that contraction can be used, I've underlined that word. So you can go back to the previous slides in your handout and see which contraction can be used there. The later, I will show you the answers, but for now, I'll just give you, um, I'll check in in about 10 minutes, okay? First, I'll show you how the Perky Duck program works. I'll do that. When Perky, Perky Duck first starts, you get a gray screen and you can't do anything with that. It's just a um, kind of like a table. So we need to open up the Perky Duck file so we can work on a piece of paper, so to speak. So I'm going to go up to file in the, the menu bar up at the top left, file, click that, and then open, no, excuse me, new, click that. Now you see that you have a white space, which is the paper on the left side, and we still have the gray, kind of like a table on the right side. So only the white side is, can be used right now. So put your fingers on your home room keys, S, D, F, J, K, L. Your pinkies are not going to be touching anything right now. And let's just practice working on a computer because it feels a little strange at first. First, just do dot one, which is the home row key of F. And you can see there that dot one is raised. The other keys are really tiny. They're little pinpricks. Those are called shadow dots. And it just shows you like a sighted person where the raised dots are in relation to the um, whole cell. So you see there that one is raised, the other dots are shadow dots. If I want to make a B, I'm going to press D and F on the home row keys at the same time. If I want to make a C, I'm going to press F and J on the home row keys at the same time and let go. And then I, if I press the space bar key, I go over a space. If I press the space backspace key, I go back. Like, as I said, I believe you can do the delete key. Yes, you can. So that's very nice, but that's about all this program can do. And then if you want to go to the next line, you press your enter key on the keyboard and continue on. So I'm going to do E and F in Braille. All right, well, hopefully you did okay on these. You, again, you finish all six sentences. If you couldn't quite get it, that's okay. Let's look at the answers for just a moment. And again, you can check your answers later on if you like, or you can pause the recording and check them now. That was pretty cool, huh? So our next group are word signs and another group with that can be group signs. So far we've learned some word signs, the alphabetic word signs. Word signs can be can stand for entire words. Then there are group 
oops, signs that stand for groups of letters. Some contractions can be both, depending on whether they're standing all by themselves or whether there are other braille dots around them. And there are lots of rules about when and if. You don't have to worry about the rules right now. Just know that when these some of these um, contractions are standing by themselves, they are word signs. But if they have braille around them, they are group signs. So let's look at six of those. There is a contraction for child and CH. It's dots one and dot six at the same time. When it's all by itself, then it stands for the word child. If there is braille around it, then it, still, it goes back to being just CH again. It's a group sign at that point. Another contraction shows dots one and four at the top and six down in the bottom right corner. All by itself, it's the word shall. But when there's braille around it, then it becomes SH and so on. For TH, or it can be this, or WH, or it can be which, or OU, or it can be out, ST, or it can be still. Again, your young child is probably not going to come across shall at this point. So you don't necessarily have to worry about that, but it probably comes up a lot as a group sign, SH. The same for maybe which, maybe that's a big word right now, but WH might come up a lot. So just, again, choose the ones that are relevant to you and your child right now or your work. Don't worry about memorizing the whole thing. You might just keep in mind that some braille signs can be word signs and sometimes they can be group signs. Let's look at some examples of how those contractions might work. So we have she shall, the S-A fraction. When there's braille around it for she, you have S-H and then E. So the word she is S-H-E using that contraction. But if that same braille configuration, those same dots are all by themselves, they become the word shall. So you could have she shall at the same time using the same braille contractions, but depending on whether there's braille around it or not, it means something different. The next example, stand, is a word, word so it's, that's a group sign. And still, then that same braille contraction is a word sign. Each child, there is the CH contraction. All by itself, it's the whole word child. Or out, there is the OU contraction. All by itself, it's the word out. Which whale? All by itself, that those dots, one, five, six, all by themselves are the whole word which. But if there's braille around them, then they just go back to being WH for whale. This, those dots mean the whole word this, or with braille around it, it can be TH, thumb. Doesn't matter how it's pronounced. So this, thumb. We have some practice about to try out what I just talked about. There are four sentences this time, so that's a little easier. Again, wherever something is underlined, that's where a contraction is used. Notice in sentence number two, I have shout with a slash between them. Don't worry about the slash, ignore it. I only did it because I couldn't get the PowerPoint to have separate looking slash or underlines for SH and OU. So I put a, a slash there, but don't try and braille it. Don't worry about it, ignore it. Go ahead and practice and then I'll show you the answers. I'll give you 10 minutes. Here are the answers to those sentences. How did you do? Oh, some more group signs and some more examples. 
as I said, there are a lot of these. Again, just kind of let this flow over your head. It's, it's perfectly all right. This is just a, an overview and exposure to what contractions are. So there is a contraction for AR. You can use it in words. Obviously it doesn't mean anything by itself. So these are group signs on this screen. They stand for groups of letters, they're not whole words. So we need other letters with them to make them mean anything. So there's a contraction for AR and we can use that in the word far, car, bear, care, an arm. So we can use it at the end or in the middle or at the beginning of a word. Also with ED, we can use that braille contraction in bed at the end, peddled in the word, we use it twice in that word, tried and education. ER, her, runner, person, erase. The contraction for GH, Light, eight, laugh, ghost. OW, owl, cow, bowl, snow, town. And there's a contraction for ing, or excuse me, ing. It can never be at the beginning of a word. So we see ing in words like sing, king, playing, and single, but never at the beginning of a word. So more practice, just to practice those we just talked about. Just three sentences now, because you might be getting tired and we're starting to get into more complicated words that have lots of, more than one contraction in them. So I want to give you some more time to practice and then we'll look at the answers. How did you do? Are you starting to get the idea of these contractions? Then there are a few word signs. These are words, they stand for entire words that are just in the lower part of the cell. So they're not using the top two dots, one and four. They're using the lower four dots to make their braille contraction. They can't be used when punctuation follows because punctuation also is in the lower part of the cell. So some of these contractions will look like um, punctuation in certain circumstances. So they can't be used when there's punctuation after it, like at the, at the end of a sentence. But there is a contraction for um, in, enough, was, his, be, and were, six of them. Some examples in use. This first sentence reads, did he have enough gas to go home? Look at that enough. I don't know if my arrow, there's my arrow. This word enough stands for the entire word enough. That one little braille saw, two dots, means the whole word enough. But in the second sentence, he did not have enough, period. We can't use those two little dots to mean the word enough, but we can use the other group signs that we just talked about. In this case, there's a contraction for EN. I think I'll talk about that in just a moment. In then OU, which we just talked about, and GH, the next um, cell is a period. So we have three cells that mean um, word signs all right or group signs all in a row, and they read as the word enough because there's a period afterward. Another example: He was upset. Was he upset? Excuse me. Was he upset? Question. The next sentence, the fourth one down at the bottom. Yes, comma he was. Period. So again, we can use the lower sign, um, a word sign at the beginning of a sentence because there's no punctuation following it. But the second example, we have to spell out W-A-S because there's a period afterward. So sometimes you might see those word signs as word sign contractions, or you might see them spelled out. So 
some more um, contractions. These are lower group signs. We just looked at the IN contraction as a word sign, as the word in, but now it's the same dot, so it means I am. The same with the contra contraction for enough as a group sign with braille around it is just EN, just like we looked at the previous slide. Let's go back. The second sentence, the last word, EN as a group sign, Notice it's the same dots as that word sign in the sentence above. E-N-O-U-G-H. So we used group signs as, as much as we could instead of the whole word sign because we had punctuation. So I-N-E-N -E -N now. And then at the beginning of the word only, they can't be in the middle of the word. They can't be at the end of a word. They can only be at the beginning of a word. This first... Um, Contraction, it's dots two and three down at the left side of the cell. It stands for um, the letters B, E. The next contraction, the two middle, middle dots are C, O, N. And then there's a contraction for it, D, I, S. Moving to the right side of the screen, there are contractions that can only be used in the middle of the word. So the same two dots that we used for BE at the beginning could also mean BB in the middle of a word. The same dots that we used for CON at the beginning of a word can be used in the middle of the word as CC. And then going down that column, we have FF, GG, and EA is just one dot. Because that's why we can only use it in the middle of a word, not at the beginning and not at the end. Here are some examples of those contractions in use. Fluffy egg. So F, get my pointer out, F, L, U, F, F there, in that little contraction, Y. But at the end of a word, we can't use that GG word, that GG contraction. So we spell out E, G, G. Next example, each was ready. E, A, at the beginning of word for each, we can't use it. So we have to spell out E, A, and then use that CH contraction. Was is the whole word sign that we looked at. R, one little dot, E, A, it's in the middle of the word, D, Y, each was ready. And then there are a couple of contractions that are used only at the beginning of the word, like C-O-N-T-N-T, -T, content or content, and the comma as dot two. That's why we can't use E-A, which is also dot two at the end of a word. Then we could also have discontent, D-I-S at the beginning of the word, C-O-N-T-E-N-T. -E do you see how those contractions work? Any questions so far? Nothing in the chat. Okay, we are going strong. Next group, initial letter contractions. There are quite a few of these. Initial letter contractions with dot five from the cell. So these use two contract two cells. Use the dot five from the first cell. And then the first word of the word they represent for the next cell. That's why they're called initial letter contractions. They're using the first letter of the word they represent with a dot five from the previous cell next to it. So this includes words like day, ever, father, here, no, lord. Mother, name, one, part, question, right. Some more. Some, time, under, work, young, character, through, where, ought, there. So you notice that all of these contractions have that little dot five right before the next um, cell. So they're called initial letter contractions and they have a subgroup of dot five. Again, a young child is not likely to come across the word 
the character or ought. So you don't need to worry about those just now. You might concentrate on words that are familiar to a very young child. Some practice. Again, each word or letters that could be a contraction are underlined. You'll probably be going referencing your handout a lot at this point. That's okay. Some of these are dot five contractions. Some are the group sign contractions or alphabetic word signs. All the things that we've looked at so far are, might be here in these four sentences. Just do as much as you can. You can always finish later. And here are the answers. See how much shorter these sentences are getting? Another group of initial letter contractions use dots four and four and five. So before we did just up five, now we have dots four or five from the cell before. So two cells again for the word upon, four five W for a word, four five in the TH contraction for those, and then whose and these. There are just five of these. They're initial letter contractions using dots four and five. Here are some practice sentences, just two of them, again, because we're getting pretty complicated. You're coming a long ways in a very short amount of time. So be kind to yourself and just try out these two sentences. Again, ignore the slashes. I just did that for indication that there are two contractions happening there right in a row. Here are the answers. Some more initial letter contractions, this time using dots four, five, six, the whole right side of the cell before the next cell, which has the letter of the word, the first letter of the word that it represents. There are just six of these. Cannot, had, many, spirit, world, there, as in T-H-E-I-R. So in initial letter contractions practice, just two sentences again. Do your best, see how you do. It's just practice, it's just fun. Here are the answers. A new group of contractions. These are called final letter contractions. In the first group will use dots four, six from the first cell. So again, these are two, uh, two cell contractions. This time we're using the last letter of the group that, of letters that these contractions represent. Because of that, we need to have a letter before these contractions always. They can never be at the beginning of a word or be a word all by themselves. So the first one is stands for, um, that's four six, D stands for the group sign O-U-N-D. So you might see these in words like round and found. Look how short those words are. A-N-C-E has its own contraction, dance, chance, and cancel in the middle of the word. S-I-O-N has its own contraction, mission, fusion. L-E-S-S -S has its contraction. Again, we can't use these as whole words all by themselves, so we can't use this for the word less. There has to be a letter before it. So, but we can use this contraction, L-E-S-S, -S, in the words like bless, coatless, but not in lesson. O-U-N-T has its own contraction, mountain, count. Here is a practice sentence, just one, because this is getting really kind of deep now in the contractions. So here's a sentence to practice using final letter contractions using dots for six. Here are, is the answer. Here's a group of final letter contractions that use that's five, six from the cell before. So that's five, six, E stands for E-N-C-E. -E. So we have fence and audience. O-N-G, song, tongue. Again, it doesn't matter how these are pronounced. It's just where the letters are. F-U-L, hopeful, but we have to spell it out if we're using the word full. We can't use that contraction, so we have to spell out F-U-L-L. -L. 
The next one is T-I-O-N. We had an S-I-O-N with dots four, six, but five, six, N is T-I-O-N. So we can use those in that in words like motion and lotion. N-E-S-S -S can be used in the words like happiness. M-E-N-T, again, only at, after a letter, so moment, but we can't use it for mental. We can, however, use that little group sign that we learned before, the E-N contraction. So we do M-E-N-T-A-L. I-T-Y, that you can use in words like city and ability. Ooh, a big long practice sentence for um, final, final letter contractions using dots five, six. And the answer. Short forms. Technically, they're kind of contractions, but they're a whole group unto themselves, and there are a lot of them. There are six slides of these. I'm going to run through these very quickly. Again, don't worry about memorizing all of them. Just pick out some that you might be using with your um, child or young student. You, you can see this whole screen, and these it's kind of like shorthand a little bit. We're using letters from the words to mean the whole word. So we have A, B means the whole word about. We can use the letters A, B, V for above. We can use A, C for according. Probably a young child is not going to need that contraction right now. So don't worry about that one. Then we have across, after, afternoon, afterward. Again, against, we're using the ST contraction that's in parentheses right there. So it looks like AG and then the ST contraction. ALM for almost, ALR for already, AL for almost, also, AL and the contraction TH for although, ALW for always. The next screen. You can just look at it. I'm not going to read through all of them. There, like I said, there are a lot of them. Just pick out maybe a handful for right now. You'll learn the rest of them as your child grows. Any questions so far? Not in the chat box. Okay. Five sentences to practice those short forms and, and pretty much everything that we talked about so far. So I've underlined, again, all the um, words and letters that need to be contracted. See how you do, just take your time. And here are the answers. I can fit them all in one screen because I'm using contractions and the sentences are shorter. So now we've talked about contractions, but what if we want, what if we really mean the letters or word? What if we don't mean the contraction? Then we have something called a grade one indicator. It's only in Braille, it does not exist in print. It uses the dots five, six in the right part of the cell and the lower part of the cell. So we have um, capital, all capitals, CD. Normally that means the whole word could, like it's capitalized word could, C-O-U-L-D. But what if we really mean CD, capital C, capital D, for music CD, C certificate of deposit from the bank? Then we put that grade one indicator first. I'll show it with the pointer right here. It starts five, six, and then capital means dot six, and another capital, meaning the whole thing is capitalized. So dot six, dot six, and then C, D. So then with that grade one indicator, now that means actually the letters C, D, not the short form could. The next example, capital, that's the capital um, sign right here for dot six, A and L. 
Normally that means the word also at the beginning of a sentence or just capitalized with the letter A. But what if we really mean Al, that guy over there? Then we need a dot a grade one indicator with dots five, six right here in the beginning and capital dot six A L. So now that means L, not the word also. The same with but. You remember all by itself, B stands for but using contractions. But what if we really mean B? Then we need a grade one indicator. And then we can use the same dots and even all by itself, this will read as the letter B. The final example, 22, do you, you may remember the number sign. It's not like the hash mark, but it's, a, it's telling the Braille reader, don't read the next dots as letters, read them as numbers. So we have that and then we have two and two. So that's the number 22. But what if we mean to B? It's the same dots. How do we get them to mean B instead of two? Well, we use a grade one indicator. We have used the numeric indicator with dots one and two to mean two. Then the, the my pointer keeps disappearing, I'm sorry. Um, but then we have the grade one indicator, dots five, six. And the same dots, one and two to mean now mean B with that grade one indicator. Any questions on grade one indicators? Not in the chat. Okay, thank you. Let's look at a couple of sentences just to, for fun, just to see how the, these contractions, how much these contractions save space and therefore time. The first sentence, I'll get up my pointer, capital, can you read this braille sentence? The same sentence using contractions, capital C for can, Y for you. Can you read this Braille sentence? Look how short it is compared to the one that's all spelled out. The next example is capital. Many people have said it can be done. The same sentence using contractions, cap. Many people have said it can be done. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Now I want to talk about the codes just a bit. I don't mean to scare you, but just to inform you that um, the code that we are talking about now is called Unified English Braille, or UEB for short. It's the same as the old code. We switched codes in 2016, January 4th, 2016. But don't worry, everything that we've learned so far is the same in the old code and in the new code. The new code is UEB, old code was called something else. So I just wanna show you these contractions because you, if you get an older book, you may come across these contractions maybe as you're reading to your child. Hmm. So don't be alarmed and trying to search through all of the contractions because they won't be there. These are from the old code. So I just wanna show you that there's a contraction in the old code before 2016 for DD, the word T-O for two, into, by, B-Y, B-L-E, C-O-M, A-T-I-O-N, we still have T-I-O-N, but there was a contract for A-T-I-O-N. And look, it loses dot six. Dot six for Y, when it meant A-L-L-Y, and there was a contraction for o'clock. So nine contractions that we don't have anymore. If you're interested, these are the reasons why those nine contractions were eliminated in the new code, UEB, the one you're learning now. You'll notice that we haven't talked about these yet because we were learning UEB, but now we're talking just a little bit about that old code. Just a few examples, that, again, just to show you what might happen. It's not to scare you. You don't have to learn two different codes. Your child will most likely not be learning two different codes right away. So don't worry about this. It's just for your information. The old code, as I said, 
or the yeah, old code was called English Braille American Edition, E-B-A-E. The new code, as I mentioned, is called UEB, Unified English Braille. Again, it's okay if you don't memorize these things, just know that if you, if you hear these things, these terms bandied about, you have some idea that, oh, that's something about codes. It's okay, you don't have to know all of it right now. I just wanna show you three examples though of how things might look in the new and the old codes. So the first one is the word accessible. In the new code, we don't have that BLE contraction at the end of the word. We spell out B-L-E. I'll show you, B-L-E. But in E-B-A-E, we had a contraction. And so we had that at the end of the word, but notice it looks just like the numeric indicator and that's why we don't use it anymore. The next example, education. In UEB, as I said, we have a T-I-O-N um, contraction right here. In the old code, we had an A-T-I-O-N contraction. And it looks like capital N because we have a dot six N and it looks like capital N. So it was confusing. So we eliminated some confusion with the new code. And then the word really changed a lot. In the UEB, the code that you are learning now you're, and that your child is likely to learn right now is R-E-A-L-L-Y. In the old code, we had an A-L-L contraction, so we could use it in really as R-E-A-L-E-L-Y. But again, it's a capital sign, dot six, right in the middle of the word. So it was getting confusing, especially with today's habits in print, mashing two words together and having capital, capital letters in the middle of a word, it was becoming very confusing whether that actually meant a capital Y or if it was a contraction A-L-L-Y. So we tried to make it simple with the new code. That's all you need to know really for now. Now let's have some fun. Now that we know some contractions, we can do drawing with our um, keyboard or braille writer. If you follow these steps, one, two, three, hopefully you end up with the little shape down below that you see in Braille dots. It's a little heart. Isn't that cute? Your child can draw and so can you. You now know the contractions for, or can look them up, the contractions for WH, GH, they're capitalized, and AR. So anything that's capitalized is a contraction. So try it out and see if you can make a heart or two. And if you want something else to draw, you can draw a shamrock. We just had the month of Mar uh, March and St. Patrick's Day. So th three steps for this one. Capital letters indicate contractions. So OW and GH are contractions. You can go back and look those up and make a little shamrock. If you want to do more braille drawing and that's something you want to um, have fun with, go for it. There are lots of things you can find online. If you do a, a general online search for drawing with a Braille writer or Braille drawing, there are two um, resources that I've, I found and I put down here on the screen for you. Sometimes they're a little hard to find, but follow the thread and you'll get there. So one is called, so what about drawing? It's an older document, a lot of fun, things like um, a teddy bear, a sailboat, all sorts of interesting and fun little things for, for you or your child to draw. There's another one, drawing with your Perkins Brailler, and that's for using with your Braille writer, but it can also be done with Perky Duck if you want, and then use an embosser, like a, a Braille printer to print it out. But, See if you can draw these things and just kind of have some fun. Braille doesn't have to all be the same six dots. That gets a little boring sometimes, especially for a young child. They like pictures too. Hopefully you have Braille posters that were sent to you, but if you want to print more, these this is where they're found. You can go to... Um, the link directly that I have there, or you can follow the 
breadcrumbs I have listed down below. It's from the Duxbury Systems, the one that created the software program that you're using on your computer right now. I think you might only get the UEB chart now. I'm not sure they're even offering the old code anymore, and that's okay because really we're not using the old code anymore. It's just that it might be floating around out there because there's an old book or something out there. Any questions from the entire workshop? If not, then thank you very much for coming. I hope you learned a lot. Again, please don't feel overwhelmed about this. It's just an overview. You're now much more educated about Braille and how it works, and you'll be able to talk to your child about this. See you later.